Hello everybody! Something I wish I did all these years ago when I started learning languages was to consistently track my progress so that I could see how far I've come and improve on my language learning methods as I go. So today we're discussing how to track your progress in languages. Hello, if you are new here, my name is Lindy and I make videos about language learning, productivity and mindset. We can look at tracking your language process in two ways. The first one is your actual progression from beginner to advanced onwards. And the second aspect of tracking language learning is actually what are you doing to study this language? What kind of immersion are you incorporating into your language learning? What kind of tools are you using? Tracking your language learning activities and progress, why is this important? Well, for one, it gives you a visual representation of how much time or effort you've actually been spending on your languages. If you are creating a plan to study for an exam, for instance, it's a nice way to see how far you still have to go and to look back on how much you've done. For the whole of last year, I was tracking which languages I was learning every single day and I really got to see, hmm, maybe I'm not spending enough time on certain languages or maybe I'm spending too much time on another language. Now, it's up to you whether you want to track the amount of hours you spend. There are people who have Excel spreadsheets where they log exactly how many up to the minutes they've spent on language learning. If this works for you, great. Uh, I don't really see the benefit in tracking uh, minutes because it puts a lot of pressure on my language learnings. Otherwise, if you just want to see what activities you're doing, you can use a general calendar view, which I will show you in a minute. So let's jump into different methods of how you can track your language learning progress and activities. The first one is a language activity journal or notebook or calendar. If you watch my language learning goals for the year video, you'll see I touched on this notebook and it is over here so i can show you a little bit more of how i use this notebook it's just a calendar a small um year planner for muji but you can use a blank notebook uh, so i have a monthly view here where i track what lessons i have in which language uh, i also track my books uh in general like what books i'm reading when and i have also set a goal for myself to write diary entries in my two focus languages uh, every Sunday. So I just indicate those with these uh, with these three lines. I have an indicator on the side here for the languages I'm learning uh, and I just add them in once I do them. So I'm not writing all my list of languages uh, but just Korean because I've done something in Korean. I watched a movie. Uh, Spanish is this red dot so these are when I'm taking Spanish lessons or using Busu. And I've got my diary entries here. I write them on Sundays, uh, sometimes I'm a little late, so this one's on Tuesday. So this just gives me a nice visual overview on a month of how much time I dedicate to certain languages. Now if we jump to my weekly view, originally I intended to have one column for everything I'm doing in Tagalog and one column uh, over here for everything I'm doing in Hungarian. But that felt very stifled, uh, so as I move along, I kind of just keep it open so that I can write whatever I'm doing in any language, regardless. I've just indicated what I have did. When I don't do something, I put it in there as well. And then my little essays. I do get corrections and I write them in my journal. I write it in my language learning notebook, I mean. And I also just indicate what languages I've actually um, touched on this week. So this was a really bad week. Uh, if you understand Korean, it just says, you know, this week was really bad and I didn't want to write anything, so I didn't do anything. But that's okay. We move on. We feel better. Here I'm just doing a little bit of journal entries in Tagalog and Hungarian. And you'll see my format of my journal kind of changes every week. And that's what I really like about tracking my activities and progress um, because I don't have a plan for the whole year. I just let myself change and adapt as I go along. So it's, a, it's nice to look back on this calendar and see how I felt and how my mood or my hormones impact my language learning as well. And that helps me plan better. If I know that I'm feeling really down um, for one week every month, I can scale down my activities and just do fun things like immersion rather than forcing myself to work through textbooks, for instance. And here we are on this week. So I still have to write my journal entries because it's not Sunday yet. And then I just have a backlog of tasks that I'd still like to do. So that is my language learning calendar, journal, progress. And I'm sure this will evolve 
as we go through the year so I'll be sure to update you guys on that. The second method, this one is more for tracking your actual progress from beginner to advanced, is to keep video or audio logs. You can also just write diary entries and see how you are able, like how much are you able to express in a language at the start of the year and at the end of the year, how much can you express yourself? It can just be for yourself to look back on and be like, hey, I've actually progressed or ooh, I'm not really progressing. Let me put in a little more work. For many years, I was keeping a journal in Japanese and Chinese every single day. And it is so amazing to look back and see how my handwriting has changed, how my vocabulary has increased. And it's really these everyday little habits that help you progress in a language. So keeping a journal, just forcing yourself every day to write something or to record something can keep you accountable to your goals and help you see an actual progression of how you are improving from beginner to advanced. The third thing that I touched on earlier is actually publicly posting your progress on um, a nice, happy, safe language learning community like Twitter, for instance. So this is a really simple thing you can do to see what activities are working for you and how much you're getting done. You don't need to make a big deal out of it by posting lofty goals quite public and I just like the community feeling. I like seeing what other people are doing in their languages too. It makes me feel like we're all progressing together and reaching our goals together. Another reason why this is good, why I would recommend it is because it gives you some motivation. When you are feeling down and there will be those days when you're like, am I even learning? Am I even progressing? You can look back and celebrate your small victories. So for instance, if you understood a TV show or if you had your first conversation or if you finally memorized that word you've been wanting to learn, you can just post it even if it's just to yourself and say, hey, today I finally managed to have my first conversation. And you look back and be like, well, you know, I'm actually progressing and it just helps you keep going. I did post my language learning goals for the first quarter on Twitter and I was really excited to see how many people in the community adopted this same format and tagged me in uh, how they post their goals and keep track on Twitter as well. So you can check it out there if you are interested in joining the language community on Twitter and tracking your progress with us. Another way you can track your language learning progress is by doing it via an app. There are apps like Busu which make it really easy for you to set up a study plan. So a huge thank you to Busu for being the sponsor for today's video. I have made a full review video of the Busu language learning app before if you want to check that out. You can learn a bunch of languages on there and it is an app that I'm particularly using for Spanish. But today I'm just going to focus on their study plan and how you can use that. Setting up a study plan on Busu is the perfect way of setting yourself up for tracking your progress because you can reach a daily or a weekly goal that you indicate. Let's click on create a study plan. You can indicate what is your main goal for learning this language. Uh, for me, I would like to learn it for fun and culture. So I'm just going to say, well, I'd like to be um, intermediate, B2. That sounds good. And then over here, you uh, tell Busu when you want to learn and they will create a plan for you. Um, around lunchtime sounds good, 1230. Yep. And let's do 15 minutes a day. All right, let's say continue and they will generate a plan for you. You should be able to reach intermediate B1 by December 22, 2021. That is really exciting. So it has set up a little study plan for me. Uh, it'll just take me to the next exercise based on my current app progress. So now I'm on the B1 course. Exciting. So tracking your language progress keeps you accountable to yourself, but if you are struggling a little bit and you want someone there to help you, Busu recently added a new feature where you can book individual sessions with professional tutors online. They help you keep track to achieve your goals, so if you need any extra help, this feature is available to you. You can use the link in the description to download Busu and check it out. And finally, a word of caution. As language learners, we should not be caught up in what we're doing and how much we're doing and are we sticking to our goals? That's really important, but mental health is important too. So if you're feeling tired and drained, adjust your plan. The whole point of tracking this is not only to feel better about your progress and see how much you're doing, but to make incremental changes and adjustments as you go along. So if you set up a language learning journal where you're tracking what you do, you can see that 
maybe you planned on watching videos and listening to podcasts and reading books but you're actually only watching videos then you can adjust your plan going forward it's okay if you're not doing what you originally intended to do the point of tracking your progress is to see either where you need to be a bit more strict on yourself or where you just need to let things go it's okay if you're not following your original plan this thinking comes from what uh, what I do at work. So I'm a product designer and we work in the agile methodology. That means we have sprints. One sprint is two weeks and we have a certain number of sprints within a quarter to complete features that lead to an eventual goal. And it is called agile because you can go back and change things and say, actually, this is taking longer than we thought or this, we tried it, we released it and users don't like it. So we're going to roll it back and adjust. You don't plan for the entire year and do something and then have it fail at the end. So it's OK to have little failures and learnings along the way so that you can adjust every single sprint. But what I'm getting at is that if you are tracking your progress in little increments, you can make changes accordingly. That is also why I made my language learning plan in quarters and not for the entire year. It's more important to get yourself into an immersive state of language learning than it is to be spending all your time planning. You need to actually be putting in the work and not just writing or thinking about it. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know how you are tracking your language learning in the comments and please subscribe if you want to see more language learning videos. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye bye.